This call is now being recorded. Okay, so I know that I uh, uh, that many of you could not attend the uh, the previous session. Um, so before we we move on to other uh, topics, uh, have you watched the 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 previous sessions? Uh, do you have uh, questions or remarks about it? I watched a bit, but I still need to go like deeply through. So I wouldn't count as as I watch it basically. Okay, I mean. Another option, I, I could do like a, a sketch revision of uh, of what happened in the uh, in previous. It would be helpful, but I don't know if people here was uh, if people in this call was already here last week. Then uh, it's no issue. Like you can just continue. Okay. Yeah, I, I think only uh, only David was. Maybe do you have any strong opinions? Um, no, it's fine for me. Okay. Um, okay. So, so I I will uh, I will spend a little bit of time on on uh, sketching what happened uh, last time, although we will not rely on it. But I think it's an important uh, uh, part. Uh, to your general knowledge, and uh, and it, we will definitely use it uh, later on when we uh, uh, start talking about elliptic curves. Uh, so, so this is basically um, the so-called uh, classification of of finite abelian groups, um, and what it says is that. Um, if G is a finite abelian group, then uh, uh, you can, um, of course, you can divide the, the order of G, or you can decompose the order of G into a product of, uh, of prime powers. So let's say, uh, P1 to the N1 up to uh, PK to the NK. And, and what the classification uh, uh, tells you is that uh, G is isomorphic to um, Z. Uh, P1 to the S, oh, let's say, yeah, P1 to the S11 one, one, sum uh, P1 to the S1 uh, L1 uh, plus. Z uh, PK to the S K one up to uh, Z PK to the S L K K where the sum of the SIs Uh, let's say i j j equals to from one to l i. So for any for any i, uh, this sum it must be equal to an i. 
So you see, this is a kind of one component, and then you have you have k different components. Uh, but the the bottom line is that uh, G is isomorphic to a direct sum of cyclic groups. Right? I mean, each of these uh, these groups uh, is integers modulo. Uh, Modulo some integer, I mean, particularly uh, prime power. Uh, so we saw that this is a cyclic group, um, and and this means I I I can decompose G into a sum of uh, of cyclic groups. And uh, one corollary from this is that if uh, D divides the order of G then there is a subgroup H of G uh, such that uh, the order of H is precisely G, is precisely D. Okay, and this, this is what uh, uh, is, is sometimes referred to as the, the converse Uh, of Lagrange theorem. Right, because Lagrange theorem tells you that um, if you have a, a subgroup of G, then the order of the subgroup must divide the order of G. But uh, uh, this converse tells you that uh, uh, in finite abelian groups, uh, every every uh, divisor of the order of the group uh, admits actually a, a subgroup of of precisely this order. So this this is a very strong result that comes from the the classification. Uh, and I, I, we will not use this classification uh, today, uh, so you are safe. But I I highly recommend that you go over this uh, this episode um what what it it helps you understand is is a, a kind of the the general uh, program of of what we are about to do uh, also uh, now with with fields uh, namely we want to understand all mathematical objects of a, of a given type i mean in this case finite abelian groups uh, so we we develop a, a, the necessary uh, theory to to classify uh, to classify them and, and in case of abelian groups the the result of the i mean of the classification is this uh, this kind of structure and um, and it, it is very helpful because then later when, when we stumble upon a, 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 an elliptic curve over a finite field, we know that it's a finite abelian group, so we know it must be of this form. Uh, so this is a, this is a, roughly speaking what uh, what happened last time, but of course, uh, this is without any proof. So, uh, and today I want to talk about fields. Now, uh, I guess you could uh, you could say uh, that a field is. Uh, Well, let let me put the the kind of long definition. So, a field is a set F with a, a two binary operations.
which I denote by um, plus and a multiplication. Uh, and uh, two specified elements which we denote zero one if you want you can put a uh, zero f and one f these are two elements in the field uh, and we require them to be different. So this is the data. And now the conditions are a, a kind of a, the natural thing you would expect from a, from a multiplication and addition of, of uh, let's say, real numbers. Uh, so one is that both operations need to be associative so x let's say for any x y and z uh, x plus y plus z is equal to x plus y plus z this is associativity of addition and and also uh, x times y times z is equal to x times y times z uh, the second axiom is commutativity so uh, for any x x and y f x plus y is equal to y plus x and x times y is equal to y times x um then we have let's say neutral elements axiom so uh, for every x in f zero times x sorry zero plus x is x and one times x is also x And then we have a, a inverse uh, inverse axiom. So uh, for any x in F, uh, there exists an element which we denote as minus x, also in F, such that x plus minus x is equal to zero. And for any non-zero element, so I write it like this, F minus this, the set with one element containing the zero element. So for any non-zero element, there exists an element which we call X minus one, such that x times x minus 1 is equal to 1. And the last, uh, the last axiom uh, kind of tells you the compatibility required uh, uh, from the, the two operations. I mean, so far, all the axioms uh, can be stated separately for, uh, for addition and for uh, multiplication. And the fifth one says that 
uh, uh, for any x, y, and z in f, if you do x plus y and you multiply it by z, you get x times z plus y times z. This is called distributivity sometimes. Okay. Uh, and uh, 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 I so this this is kind of a long definition, but I could I could do a compact definition with what we already know about groups. Uh, so equivalently, a field is a set. F with a, a binary operations plus and times a, and a specified elements zero different than one in F, such that only two axioms. One is that if I take the field, I mean the, the, the underlying set F with addition and the zero element, or if I take the, the underlying set of the field and I, I remove zero, and I take multiplication and the, the unit element, both of these are abelian groups. And the second axiom is the distributivity, I mean, the, the compatibility between uh, addition and multiplication. So uh, for any x, y, and z, In F, X plus Y, Z is X, Y, sorry, X, Z plus Y, Z. Okay, and these are really equivalent definitions because if you look at the axioms, uh, uh, one, two, three, and four, all say that uh, that you have an abelian group structure with respect to addition and multiplication. Uh, in the case of multiplication, you need to remove the zero element. Okay. Uh, and a uh, uh, last remark, You can observe or you can think about it as an exercise um, it automatically follows so if f is a field well first i claim that the uh, uh, the additive and multiplicative inverses are unique can anybody say uh, why i mean i claim that you cannot have a, a i mean you take an element x in f you know that you have an element minus x such that x plus minus x is equal to zero, but you cannot have another element different than minus x that satisfies 
uh, this property. Can anybody say why? I would just, maybe this is not the reason, but I would just write the same thing with the other candidate. Yes. And you can subtract X to both sides and you see they're equal. But what do you mean to subtract? We're trying to uh, uh, to prove kind of that you could subtract. I mean, to subtract is to add the, the, in, oh, the yeah, yeah. inverse. Okay, that's the... But remember that we proved this fact about groups, right? We we showed this. You you can go back to the the chapter of groups. We showed that the 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 inverse in a group is unique. You cannot have a, you cannot have another another one, and this is a this is a group. So, so the, the additive inverse must be unique. A and similarly, this thing is a group. So the multiplicative inverse also has to be unique by the same reasoning that we, uh, uh, that we had in, in groups. So see, this unique uniqueness of, of additive inverse, for example, tells you that uh, that uh, y is equal to minus six. So this is one observation. The second observation is uh, well, what happens um, when uh, when you multiply by z an element by zero. So uh, uh, I claim that for any x in f, zero times x is zero. And this, if, if you look at the axioms, let's say you look at the compact uh, definition, it, it does not appear here, right? But it follows automatically from uh, from the axioms. Uh, may I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Um, for the first item, additive and multi multiplicative inverses are unique. Do you mean that um, they are different? I mean, for each field element, the um, the inverse of it, oh, sorry, the additive inverse of it and the multiplicative inverse of it, they are different um, number, different I, field element. I mean, uh, what I mean, okay, so like uh, uh, additive, additive inverse we denote as minus x, right? Uh, yes. but but it put like uh, uh, hypothetically it could be that if you take an element x well the axiom guarantees that you have an additive inverse but maybe there is another element y in f such that, uh, uh, that that it kind of uh, functions uh, as another additive inverse, right? Uh, namely, x plus uh, y is also equal to zero. And I claim that in this case, y has to be equal to to minus x. This is the what I mean by uniqueness. A and the the, the analogous uh, statement would hold for a multiplicative. Uh, uh, inverse. I mean, if you I right, see. you know by the axioms that x times x minus one is equal to one. But if you would have any element y such that x times y is also equal to one, then it would imply that 
uh, y is equal to x minus one. This is a uh, uniqueness of the uh, of the multiplicative inverse. I see. Thank you. Thanks for clarifying. Okay, and 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 of course this is a, a this is something we we proved for a, for groups. So you can go back; it's in the notes, for example, uh, and see this uh, this claim for groups, and it follows. I mean, of course, because of the compact definition, we have a, a two group structures, uh, so we can we can automatically deduce this uh, uh, uniqueness. Okay, and as for the, the, the second bullet point, you see, I mean, I, I express zero as zero plus zero, then I use distributivity to deduce that zero times x must be zero times x plus zero times x, and then I, uh, if you wish, uh, I add to this equation minus zero times x, because I mean, a priori, I don't know what is zero times x. So I, I add to this equation uh, uh, the, the additive inverse of zero times x, and I get that uh, zero times x must be zero. Any questions about the, the definition and the, the bullet points? Can you repeat that? Does my sound work? Uh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Hello. Yes. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know what's going on today with the headset and everything, but I have a question. It, to me, it feels a bit weird that in order to prove uh, like these additive and multiplicative uh, uh, properties or invert that, that the inverses are unique, we are just doing operations by zero. Like it kind of feels like cheating. Uh, I don't know if cheating, but I, I'm not sure. Like it doesn't logically prove prove to me that they are unique, or at least no, it's, it's only it's, This is the this is not a logical proof. This logical proof, I mean, the logical proof is something we did in groups. But but let me repeat it. You know what? Uh, um, uh, let's put it here. Let G, I write it in the general uh, uh, notation. So G multiplication and E be a group. Uh, and, and X an element in G. Uh, uh, the axiom of the groups guarantees that there exists x minus 1 in G such that x times x minus 1 is E. If, in addition, furthermore, um, there exists y in G such that X times Y is equal to E, then, uh, well, what do I do? I multiply all this equation by uh, X minus one, uh, uh, actually I multiply it well, since I, multi I multiply uh, all, all both sides on the left by x minus one, then I get x minus one times x times y. If you wish, formally, I this is the case e x minus one. Sorry. x minus 1 times e, but of course, by associativity, I could write x minus 1 x y, 
is equal. Well, and then the, the, the right hand side is something times E is always this uh, something. So this is X minus one. And by, oh, the, axi okay. by the axioms of the group, Y is equal to X minus one. Okay. Thank you very much for this reminder. That, that okay. was really useful. Thank you. Okay. So so the, the inverses are, uh, are unique uh, in, in a field. Uh, just just as they are in groups. Okay. Famous examples. Uh, one, the the uh, the origin of uh, of all these generalizations is the real numbers. Uh, but you could even go a, a, a bit a, a, a bit backwards and a, a consider just the rational numbers. So Q, I remind you, is the set of all quotients A over B such that A and B are integers. And B is not zero. So if you wish all, all the, the generalized uh, fractions, this is called the rational numbers. <clears throat> and uh, uh, you know from uh, elementary school that you can uh, add two fractions and, and get another fraction. And you can multiply two fractions, get another fraction. Uh, and these these operations are uh, associative uh, and so on. You have an inverse. Uh, uh, I mean, the, the additive inverse is just uh, putting minus, and the multiplicative inverse of a of a, a generalized fraction is you uh, uh, you invert the the order of a and b. So a over the inverse of a over b is is b over a. Uh, so, so this is this is uh, this is another field. Of course, we saw that uh, you take what we denoted as uh, as integers modulo p, but now I will also denote it as fp. This is all the numbers zero up to p minus one. Of course, P is prime. With the operations, um, addition modulo P and uh, multiplication modulo P. And to, to check that FP is a field, I remind you um, to see that, I mean, the 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 associativity and the uh, I mean the associativity of, of of modulo p addition modulo p multiplication is uh, is straightforward. Uh, also, compatibility of of uh, I mean the, what we called here uh, distributivity axiom is uh, is is easy to to, to verify. The only uh, the only axiom that is uh, not easy to verify is that you have a multiplicative inverse for any non-zero element. But this uh, this is what uh, this is the content of, uh, for example, uh, Fermat uh, little theorem, which we also showed. Uh, 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 so so multiplicative inverses also exist. Uh, okay, so of course you could go also uh, uh, to the complex numbers. Um, 
in uh, one of the presentations uh, of complex numbers, we talked about this uh, um, um, polar uh, polar representation. So you take R his theta, where R is some uh, non-negative number, and theta is a is some angle between zero and two pi and uh, you could you could multiply and you could uh, add and you can also find the the i mean of course the the additive inverse is simply uh, uh, taking minus here and uh, you can find the multiplicative inverse So uh, yes, yeah, so let's say if if Z is R his theta, then and let's say that that it's it's not zero. So so R is uh, is strictly positive. Uh, and then the inverse of of Z is. Uh, R inverse kiss minus theta. Okay, and because we we showed that if you if you want to multiply a uh, uh, two two complex numbers, uh, you multiply the you take the for example the polar representation, and you multiply the radiuses. And and you add the two angles, and what happens when you do it for these two uh, these two elements? You get uh, one times kiss of zero, which is one. Okay, and maybe an interesting example. Uh, we will, of course, we will soon uh, uh, restrict attention almost only to finite fields. But it's worthwhile to see, I mean, what can happen here in between, in between Q and R. So first, we need to at, le at least identify uh, one non-rational number. So... A, a proposition. I claim that square root of two is not a rational number. And this is a classical proof from a, a Greek mathematicians. A, a suppose towards contradiction. that it is a rational number and write square root of two as a quotient of two integers. But of course, a, 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 these quotients, a, a, they, they, they uh, they are not unique, right? Because, uh, for example, uh, one half is also equal to uh, uh, two quarters, and so on. Uh, but I could demand that the GCD of A and B is one. I mean, if it's not one, I simply cancel all the common uh, all the common divisors of A and B until I get uh, uh, this is called the reduced fraction. And of course, A, A, A and B are non-zero integers. Okay, but then... A, A, 
I simply raise this equation to, uh, uh, I mean, to the power of two, and I get that two b square is equal to a square. Now, if a is even, then since I assume that the GCD of A and B is one, then B must be odd. <clears throat> uh, but but then I have a, a a problem in the parity of this equation because a, a square is also even and a, okay so a square is also even so and in fact not only that a square is even if if a is even let's say a is equal to uh, 2k then a square is equal to 4k square Um, and this implies that um, b square is equal to 2k square. And this cannot happen because, uh, because b, b is odd, so b square must, must be odd. It cannot be... Uh, it cannot be two times uh, something. Okay, so uh, um, uh, b square is odd, and that's a contradiction. And if a is odd, alternatively, If A is odd, and then also A square is odd, but then but then A square needs to be two times a, 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 two times B square, and this cannot happen. Uh, we cannot have in uh, contradicts Um, the the parity okay okay so in both cases we get uh, we get a contradiction and this means that uh, we cannot have a square root of two uh, being a, a being a rational number. Okay, and, and this brings me to, to a, a new example. You consider this is denoted Q with a joining square root of two. And what you do here, <coughs> you, you simply consider 
or all the elements of the form x plus y times square root of 2, where x and y are rationals. And <coughs> addition and multiplication is, is very intuitive. I mean, uh, 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 it's if you think of it, it's analogous to defining the complex numbers as uh, you take all the the elements of the form x plus plus y i where i is like the square root of minus one okay and uh, you can sh so of course you can you can uh, you can add uh, two of these and you can multiply two of these when you multiply of course when you multiply y times square root of two with y prime times square root of two you get two times y which is a, a legitimate uh, element back in the field and maybe an exercise uh, um, what is the the multiplicative inverse of this element right? like a generic element okay uh, so i i leave it for you uh, but but of course since we proved that a uh, square root of two is not a rational number then we get something in between, right? We get Q adjoined square root of two is somewhere in between the rational numbers and the real numbers. And of course I can adjoin many, many more uh, roots. Like I can adjoin uh, square root of, uh, of three and of five and, and so on. Any questions about this uh, this example? Not from my side. It, yeah, it seems all of us are here. Ah, it's still uh, it's still recording. Okay, so um, observe the following. Uh, I claim that uh, a field F has no. This is called zero divisors. And uh, uh, what I mean is that if um, for x and y in f, you have x times y equal to 0, then Either x is equal to zero or y is equal to zero. Or both, but but or in 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 uh, mathematical statements uh, we mean inclusive or. Okay? And uh, uh, why is that? Well, I mean if x y is equal to zero then i can multiply x y 
by x minus one. And this must be equal still to zero because I can multiply zero by x minus one. Uh, so if, if x is non-zero, then uh, there exists a multiplicative inverse, e x, uh, x minus one. And I can multiply all this equation and get that uh, y is equal to zero. And uh, 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 of course, if y is, is, is not zero, then I can do the same. Uh, let's put it in the same format, uh, x, y, y minus one is is also equal to zero and this would mean that x is equal to zero okay this is this is a very very trivial uh, observation but uh, but from it we can already deduce uh, something useful Uh, so I take an integer, well, a natural number n, and I consider integers modulo n, but now, well, of course, I have a zero element, a unit element, and a, a two operations, right? Addition modulo n and multiplication modulo n. So I have all the data uh, uh, that is needed for a field, but the question is, are the, are the conditions of, uh, I mean, are the axioms of the field uh, satisfied? And I claim that this is a field if and only if n equal to p is a prime, is prime. Okay, so one direction we saw, I mean, if, if n equal to p, we saw that a, a integers modulo p is a field. And I remind you, in, in terminology, we call it the, the prime field. Okay, so, so the, the, the real new content of this proposition is that this is the only case uh, for which integers modulo n is, is a field. So, so the, the converse uh, direction, uh, if, n is equal to k times l with uh, k and l bigger than one so so n is not a prime then in 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 integers modulo n k times l is equal to well to to n which is zero Uh, and k and l are strictly bigger than one, so they cannot be zero. Uh, so they constitute uh, what we just call zero divisors, right? And and a field cannot have zero divisors, so uh, so z n is not a field. Okay. Um, a main a main uh, uh, notion 
in the uh, in the theory of fields is is what is called the characteristical field so so let f be a field the minimal number Um, and such that one plus one n times is equal to zero is called uh, and the characteristic. of f and we denote a, a char of f equals to n if no such n exists of course it could happen a we say we write that the, the characteristic of the field is zero okay and um of course the the characteristic of the real numbers is a, a, is also the characteristic of the the rational numbers which is also the characteristic of the complex numbers and this is zero and the characteristic of the prime field fp is is p but potentially uh, um, we uh, 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 we may have other examples the proposition we prove next uh, says that this is the only this is the only uh, uh, two possible examples uh, for any field If uh, either char f is equal to zero or char f is equal to p with uh, p prime. Well, how do you prove this? again this follows automatically from the axioms of the field so we denote the characteristic of the field by n if n is not prime well if n is different than zero and uh, uh, it is not prime so it is it, it is a product of k times l with uh, k and l bigger than one then i can do the following i i do one plus one plus one n times but so so this on one hand this must be equal to zero because n we we chose n to be the characteristic of the field and n i remind you the characteristic is the minimal integer 
such that uh, uh, this equation holds. But if n is equal to, a, to k times l, I can write it as 1 plus 1 plus 1 k times. times 1 plus 1 L times. Right? I mean, uh, this is N. Okay, and, and what I get is that K times L are equal to zero, which means since in a field you don't have zero divisors, uh, that either K is equal to zero or L is equal to zero. But N is the minimal number such that one plus one plus one n times is equal to zero. And k and l are strictly, strictly smaller than, than n, right? Uh, so, uh, uh, so this, this is a, a contradiction. to the minimality okay um is this clear are there any questions clear from my head Okay, so so you see we are like moving moving in small steps, but uh, um, what we are after, I mean, uh, let's see. Okay, let me give an example. Uh, this is in the notes. This is example uh, five dot fifteen. So I consider F. This is this is sometimes denoted as, as, as GF four. And uh, as a set, it's just the elements zero, one, two, and three. And I need to tell you what is the addition and multiplication. I, I tell you it with tables. So uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. Let's say addition. Uh, you know what, it will be simpler it will be simpler to to simply say uh, um, that as an additive group I want F to be integers modulo 2 direct sum integers modulo 2 and as a multiplicative group i want a, a, a f minus 0 to be isomorphic 
to integers modulo 3. Uh, let me write the, the multiplication just for completeness. So, of course, uh, zero multiplied by anything is zero. And then we have uh, one, two, three, uh, two, zero, two, and three, two, one. Okay. And it, it turns out that uh, this satisfies the, uh, the axioms of the field. I mean, what you need to check uh, uh, GF, sorry, GF4 uh, 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 has distributivity. Remind you, it's it means that x plus y times z is uh, x z plus y z. Okay, so a, 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 and once you prove this, it means that this is a field. However, so, okay, and, and of course, the, what is the characteristic of GF? Did anybody say? Uh, two. Two, okay. So, be, because of course, the, the characteristic is completely determined by the, the additive structure, I mean, the additive group structure of, uh, uh, of the field. And, uh, and indeed, if you, you add two elements in this group, by the way, this is called the, the Klein group, Uh, if you add two elements in the Klein group, you, uh, I mean, you get, uh, I mean, if you add, the, add the, sorry, the unit element uh, in the uh, in the Klein group, I mean, you add one comma one to itself, uh, you you get zero. So what we have here is a finite field of a prime characteristic right but it is not of prime order and a, 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 this should be a kind of a motivation for you or for us a, a, to investigate what are all the possible options and how do i a, a, how do i figure out what are the the, the addition and multiplication tables of a, uh, of all possible finite fields. Uh, this this will be, yes. What do you mean by the possible options? Uh, because with with uh, the lower field uh, of four elements, like this is the only multiplication table that you can get. So where are uh, the values? But but how do you know it? I mean, how do you prove it? Okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, no clue. <laughs> okay, so we we. Uh, uh, this 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 is what it means that we we do a rigorous account we we prove what we claim and uh, 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 this kind of uh, 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 this approach uh, 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 forces us to really understand what is going on i mean uh, and later on you will be convinced that this is the only option yeah okay like does it have anything to do with the fact that um 
this is the only field or group, I don't know how to mention it right now, but that it's isomorphic to R, R2 direct sum plus R2 for the sum into R3 for the multiplication. Uh, I don't follow. What do you call R is the real numbers, no? Yeah, the real numbers, yeah. Sorry, yeah. But, so what is the question? If you, sorry, if you want to prove that this is the unique, um, the unique multiplication table that you have uh, for, for a Galois field of uh, four elements, does this imply using isomorphisms in between groups and subgroups or something like that in order to prove it, for instance? Well, it's a uh, it's more involved. Uh, okay, uh, fair enough. Uh, okay, I mean, the the issue is like in a uh, in four elements, you could say I don't need all the theory. Uh, I just uh, I just uh, uh, run all the options, and I can I can see immediately. Well, not immediately, but after a, a little bit of effort, I can see that this is the only option. Okay, How but that? like it's not clear that I, I can see this. This is the only uh, up to isomorphism GF4 uh, will be the only the only field with four elements. Uh, and uh, uh, you could say that uh, uh, you don't you don't need theory to prove it because you can. Uh, I mean, you can just try all the possible options for multiplication and addition, see what satisfies the axioms, and uh, and conclude that there is only one option up to, right, up to a, a change of symbols here. And there is only one option for a field with four elements. Okay. But uh, what will you do when I give you a big prime? Like uh, a prime with uh, 100 bits. Yeah, yeah, you can go that way. Okay. Yes. Sorry, um, sorry, I didn't follow why um, the correct characteristic of GF4 is two. Okay. Uh, let's see. So, so I claim. Uh, uh, I mean, this as an abelian group, it's it's isomorphic to uh, integers modulo two times itself. Uh, let's write. Uh, let's write it in a uh, explicitly. Zero, one, two, three. Zero, one, two, three. And of course, zero time uh, zero plus anything is this uh, is the same. So zero one two three zero one two three. Then one plus one is zero, and uh, one plus two is three, and one plus three is two. Uh, and then here I have um, two, three, zero, one, and three, two, one, zero. Okay, so if you wish, uh, uh, this this addition table would uh, uh, would correspond to the addition in. Um, a Z mod two direct sum Z mod two, where one one would correspond to one comma one. Uh, two. Well, either to a, a zero comma one or to a one comma zero. I need to check. Okay, and and three would correspond 
to to the opposite so either to uh, 1 comma 0 or 0 comma 1 okay and, and and indeed if you you do 1 comma 1 plus 1 comma 1 you get you get 0 comma 0 in in declining but alternatively you could just say the the addition table is is simply defined as this and and from the addition table you see immediately that one plus one is zero so the characteristic is two uh, is this clear um yes thank you so so it's not i mean i i advise you this this is a good exercise to kind of uh, convince yourself that this satisfies all the axioms of of the field so i gave you now explicit uh, addition and multiplication table it's a bit tedious but not not too much it's certainly feasible you can check all the axioms of a, of a field thank you Okay, now, uh, uh, well, I say that this is the only field up to isomorphism. So, but I didn't define really the notion of, of isomorphism between fields. So let's, let's do it now. Uh, let F and K be fields a function f from f to k is called a field homomorphism if well first i want that um f of zero is equal to zero and f of one is equal to one uh, two for any x and y if I want that f of x plus y is f of x plus f of y, and I also want that f of x times y is f of x times f of y. And so this is this is a homomorphism, and and a, a f is called an isomorphism if it is is in addition. inject a uh, bijek okay and uh, um in fact yes does this, mean, does this mean that if, if we go that way and we try to find an isomorphism where either f of k is gf of 4, the other field has to be f of uh, gf of 4 also? Like there's no other way in which from another field you can have an isomorphism for this function of, right? Well, I mean, uh, uh, to be precise, uh, 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 isomorphism does not does not mean equality of sets so 
if I defined GF of four in this manner, it means that I, I committed to a specific set of symbols, zero, one, two, and three. Yeah. And and you, if you want to uh, uh, define an isomorphic field to GF four, you do not need to commit to this set of symbols. The only thing you need to commit is to the, the addition and multiplication tables. So you could call it, uh, uh, I don't know, A, 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 B, C, D, where A, B, C, and D are some different objects than 0, 1, 2, and 3. But you define the multiplication table just like this, just like oh, I did here. I see, I see. And this will be isomorphic, right? So yeah. It doesn't have to be equal, and this this is why we we have to have this flexibility of of uh, isomorphism because uh, uh, things in reality are not equal. I mean, uh, uh, you denote it in different uh, letters, you get something that is uh, is not equal as a set, but it has from it has the same uh, structure of addition and multiplication tables. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, uh, so this this is on the on the kind of naive level, but uh, uh, in in slightly more sophisticated examples, you you can you can look at certain uh, certain sets of, uh, for example, of polynomials, and 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 find out that this this specific set of polynomials has a structure of a field which will then be uh, uh, isomorphic to this uh, uh, Galois field. Okay, so it can, I mean, it can come in, in many different flavors, but the, the, the bottom line is that you cannot, I mean, this, this will be the classification of finite fields, uh, uh, up to isomorphism, there is only one. Okay, awesome. Okay, now we we talked about it in in the case of groups. So if if you think about it, a field homomorphism it needs to be a group homomorphism with respect to the additive uh, group structure, and a group homomorphism with respect to the multiplicative group structure. This is equivalent definition. Uh, uh, and what we had in groups is that uh, uh, if F is a field homomorphism, I will say just a, 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 a field map. Just like we said in groups, we said a, a group map. Then for any x, f of minus x is automatically minus f of x. And for any non zero x, f of the inverse of x is the inverse of f of x. Okay, this essentially it follows from the fact that uh, we have it for groups. Okay, so uh, example. Uh, of course, we can we can look at the inclusion as a function. So I take the rationals and I include them as the real numbers. And this is a field a field homomorphism. And I can also take the real numbers and include them into the uh, complex numbers. And these two are uh, uh, field maps.
Uh, now, another example. I claim that uh, uh, there is no field map from the prime field FP into the rationals. If there was, then uh, I could write zero as, I mean, of course, zero is f of zero. Let's say this, this field map is f. Uh, but zero in fp, I can write as, since fp is, is characteristic p, I can write as one plus one p times. But F is a field homomorphism, so it must commute with uh, with addition. So, so this would mean that, the, that F of one plus itself P times is equal to zero, but Again, F is a field homomorphism, so it must send the neutral elements to the neutral elements. In particular, F of one is one. So I get that in, in Q, zero is equal to one plus one P times. And this this is a contradiction. Okay. And I would say more generally, this this I give you as an exercise. If you have um, two two fields. with a uh, two different prime characteristics uh, let's say the characteristic of f is p the characteristic of k is q and uh, uh, p is not equal to q then uh, um, there is no field map F from from the field F to the field K. Okay, the, and this is done similarly to this uh, to the second example. So you see, a, a, a fields kind of have a, a a more rigid structure, and this. A, a, this is quite natural to expect because we put more conditions. So we, we put more conditions, there would be less objects. It would be harder to satisfy uh, uh, the conditions we put. So there would be less objects that actually uh, satisfy it. Any questions about, uh, about this part? Oh. Yeah. Um, when you mention there is um, the field structure, um, is it better to have? Um, I would say that. So, is if using the field in cryptography 
um, is it better that this, the the structure is simpler or um, for example compared to group so if we want to use a um, we want to consider using group or bill um, would that be better to use group well so it really depends on uh, what you are after i mean what happens in uh, typically in finite groups we know by the classification theorem that uh, uh, you essentially get a, i mean you get a, a direct sum of uh, of integers modulo uh, modulo n for various n right uh, and um, as an abelian group, uh, you have, a, a, I mean, the, 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 the cryptographic difficulty would depend on factoring a, a factoring an integer to, a, let's say, a product of primes, right? Now, what turns out to be, it may not seem like this uh, 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 from a first glance, but there is a, a quite consistent advance in the, the efficiency of algorithms to decompose uh, uh, an integer into a product of primes. Uh, so your security uh, is, is constantly uh, diminishing i mean as the, the research uh, advances and uh, i mean uh, by now we already have a sub exponential efficiency uh, to decompose uh, uh, integers into a product of primes a and this would mean that for the same level of security you need to choose higher uh, i mean uh, longer primes uh, in fields there is also an advance in uh, so the security in fields we, we still didn't uh, get to a point where we can talk about it uh, uh, sensibly but the security in fields will be uh, slightly different and and the security in elliptic curves will be a, a, a third thing Okay, so so uh, uh, the, let's say the answer to your question I cannot give in details, but generally speaking, it's it's a matter of uh, uh, security. I see. Uh, so that that's one reason, and, and of course, from from the point of view of this course, uh, we want to use elliptic curves uh, and and pairings. And elliptic curves uh, 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 cannot be, I mean, pairings of elliptic curves and uh, uh, elliptic curves in general cannot be defined over groups. You need the additional structure of the, uh, I mean, you need the two binary operations in order to, to talk about elliptic curves because remember that an elliptic curve is like a polynomial, right? It's like a y square equals x cube plus ax plus b in order to make sense of the, the solution for this polynomial you need to have both addition and multiply and multiplication you need to live in in some world where you have addition and multiplication and so th this is kind of the 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 natural place to to look is is a field uh, and you you could not make sense of this polynomial equation over a group because you what is i mean what is y times y right i mean okay if you if you take the the operation of the group to be a multiplication you can make sense of y times y but then what will be a, a i mean ax plus b and you you wouldn't have uh, addition so uh, eventually you need you need uh, two binary operations to make sense of of uh, in general of a polynomial equations okay 
I see. Thank you. Uh, all right. Maybe we can squeeze in something, uh, something else. Uh, okay, I claim. that uh, if you consider this uh, this example of the the galois field uh, gf4 of course you can view um the field with two elements as as a subset of the field with the of the galois field with the four elements And it's not only it's not only technically a subset because this is just a matter of uh, 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 how I I call my symbols. It's also compatible with the addition and multiplication, right? I mean, look the 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 multiplication of the elements zero one in uh, uh, in the Galois field uh, multiplication table is precisely the multiplication you would have in the field with two elements. And also the addition in the, the, multi, in the, uh, the Galois field with four elements restricts to the addition of, uh, 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 of the, the field with two elements. And so what it means is this is very similar to what we had in in groups i, I would call it a subfield let me let me phrase the precise definition um let f be a field A subset K of F is a subfield if, well, it, it has to contain the zero element uh, and the uh, and the unit element and um, k is a field with respect to the uh, binary operations plus in multiplication of of f okay so so in particular if k is a subfield of f then then k is a field in its own right and the 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 main example of course is that the field with two elements is a subfield okay and now adding adding to this uh, rigidity uh, statement about about fields uh, I claim the following. Let P be prime. And, uh, um, and F 
a field with a characteristic P. Then F contains a subfield that is isomorphic to FP. Okay, so how do I uh, how do I see it? Uh, consider the set K well I, I take uh, a zero one one plus one and uh, uh, or maybe it's better I take one one plus one up to one plus one p times uh, but one plus one p times because the characteristic of of f is p uh, this this is equal to zero So all in all, I have a, a, um, I have a set with p elements, and of course, I um, I can I can multi since since this is a, a since f is a field, I can multiply and add to uh, two elements in K. If uh, uh, X and Y are in K, uh, say X is equal to uh, one plus one K times, and Y is equal to one plus one. L times, then uh, of course uh, uh, I can uh, uh, I can multiply these two, and I still get uh, by by distributivity. This will be also, I mean, it's going to be a, a sum of ones. So, so it's also an element in the in the set K. And uh, in fact, this, this will be, of course, K times L times. And of course, if I add, then uh, I also get a, also get a sum of ones. So, uh, so this is also in in the in the set K. The inverse. So you see where where this is going. Of course, in the inverse of of x in additive, I mean, if x is is a, a, a one times one times uh, sorry one plus one plus one l times, then minus x will be one plus one p minus l times. And uh, uh, you can verify yourself that the, 
that x minus one is going to be a, a, um, x to the uh, p minus two. Okay, because it, it, this is this is uh, essentially for my uh, for my little theorem. Uh, and x to the p minus two, of course, is also a sum of ones because you take one plus one plus one, and p minus two is some some sum of ones. So it's in k. Okay. So this is all to say that a, a k is a subfield of f. And I can define quite naturally a map from K to FP by sending one, let me be just, a, 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 I'll disambiguate it, one of F, which is an element in K, I send it to one. And of course, one f plus one f. I send to one plus one, and so on. And, and this this is a is a field a uh, field isomorphism. Okay, um, so so the 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 crux of the the proposition is that you if you have a, a field with prime characteristic, it may not be the prime field that we we know and love, but it contain an isomorphic uh, isomorphic copy of uh, of the prime field. Um, excuse me. Uh, yeah. Yeah, when you wrote minus x, didn't you make a mistake? Isn't it p minus uh, k, the number of ones? Ah, uh, yes, 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 uh, yes. Thanks, I apologize. Yeah, so thank p you. P minus k, yeah. Okay, but this is this is the same principle as as uh, what you uh, what you know in the prime field, and all, all you use is the the distrib uh, distributivity axiom that uh, must hold in the field F. A any other questions? Yeah, yeah. I have another one. Um, well, in this talk, uh, so the first one is if we go above, uh, when you have uh, basically mentioned uh, the the property between G2 and GF2 and GF4, oh, no, no, one being a subfield of the other one. Yeah. Uh, why is, like, for GF3, will, I assume it will not be a subfield of GF4, right? Uh, is it yeah. because the multiplication table is not shared? Yeah, the multiplication table is a, uh, Look, this this comes back to the exercise uh, that I wrote here. Yeah, if exactly. you have two two fields with different characteristic, mm -hmm. you, you cannot have a, a field map, and you need to remember that if you have a subfield inclusion, then in particular you have a field map. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, uh, um, so e to prove it, you use the same thing, the, the same thing we, we did here. I mean, if you, had a if you had a field map from a field of characteristic K, uh, sorry, a field of characteristic uh, P to a field of characteristic Q, then you could write zero in the target 
zero in the target must be f of zero. Okay. Okay. Uh, which is f of uh, one plus one plus one yeah. p times. So you would get that. Well, an f of f of uh, this is is just one times one times one p times in the target in uh, in the target field. So you would get that uh, the characteristic of the target field cannot be Q, it, it, it is P. Yeah, I see. Right? That makes sense. Okay. So yeah, so the, the, this is, uh, this relates to this uh, rigidity, rigidity of the, of uh, this uh, uh, prime fields. The, uh, you, you cannot, uh, there are many things you, you simply cannot do. Yeah. The, the other thing is uh, maybe next week we can start by revisiting how you apply the match theorem to get the p minus two uh, on the sum of ones uh, on the example at the end. Well, this I can I can tell you already now. I mean, okay, you, uh, um, you know, I mean. what is x uh, x to the p minus 2 is like uh, you have a binomial um x is is um, we said it's like a, a 1 plus 1 plus 1 k times yeah uh, Okay, so this is in in. Uh, if you remember in groups, uh, uh, we denoted if you you add in a billion group you add an element to itself k times we denoted as k times the element. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and so the same the same is true for fields. I mean. Uh, uh, I can denote k times one, and, and so uh, uh, I I can simply denote it as k. This is like k times one. Sure. Okay. So so now I really have like a complete analogy with the uh, uh, with the the integers modulo p. I mean, uh, uh, for example. Uh, Right, because when I will do so, when I will do a k a, a times l in the in the general field in this uh, kind of abstract field, a, a, I, I it will be exactly as a, a k times l modulo p. Right, Be because you just you just open this up. Uh, you open you you write k as a sum of ones. You write l as a sum of ones. Sure. Okay, that makes sense. And and you use the fact that the, the characteristic of uh, of k is is p. That is a sum of ones. Uh, p times is is zero. Mm -hmm. This this is essentially the property of of. Uh, 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 saying that uh, 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 addition and multiplication correspond to modulo p. Yeah, but but that doesn't at least for me. Of course, I, I, I'm probably not following. But why? How does this justify the minus two? So the p fine, okay. But the minus two exactly. So, so now, okay. So so now, but if these correspond to multiplication modulo p, then I could say, if you want, you, you could define. A, 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 a map who define a map between k and fp that sends a, a k to k okay yeah uh, or if you want you you can also define a, in the inverse direction uh, from fp to k you you send k into k okay 
Okay. Yeah. So, or x into x. But, a, 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 and this map is compatible with a addition a, and multiplication as we defined it in K and in FP. Right? Sure, yeah. So, so now I know that in FP, if I do X to the P minus, uh, minus two, I get X minus one. Right? Okay, yeah, so, and X to the P minus two must go to, well, to X to the P minus two. I mean, uh, there is no, op I mean, there, this is like a, this this is like the identity map. It's just that mm -hmm. uh, that in K, I, I I mean I have kind of different notation because it's a, a an abstract field. I mean, if I would want to be precise in in what I write, I would need to write. I mean, K is a subfield of F, right? So the element one is one F, one F plus one F. Uh, as many times as you do, right? This is, mm -hmm. but it's just a matter of notation. It, like K is really, a, a, it's like an isomorphic copy of FP. So X to the P minus two will be the same here. It would, it would, uh, okay. So I, I realize it's not a, it's not a formal proof, but actually it would be good for you to to try it as an exercise yeah i'll definitely try um i don't feel too um positive on giving a good outcome <laughs> but but i'll definitely try and ask on, on the discord otherwise okay alternatively you could so if you remember in a, a, the prime field a, to prove a, a, that inverses exist a, you have two alternatives one is the Fermat little theorem, and the other is the the Bezout identity, right? Because if uh, if k is is smaller than p, then GCD kp is equal to one, and this means that there exists this Bezout coefficients such that uh, UK plus um, VP is equal to one. So it means that UK is equal to one modulo P. So this is the inverse, right? So, so U is equal to K minus one. Awesome. Okay. Okay, and this again, this you can, whatever I did here with integers, I can do here with the, the kind of uh, fake integers. Yeah, I see. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. That's insightful. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Sure. Okay, so uh, we're a bit over time, but I hope, uh, I hope you're okay with it. Uh, uh, we, we'll continue next time with the, uh, the classification. It will take us a while. Thank you very much. And apologies for the yeah. recording yeah. issues and like the mic and all, all that stuff. Uh, the computer is crazy today. Ah, it's okay. <laughs>